Hello and welcome to the Upward Bound Integrated 2 uh, application number 3 walkthrough. So in this walkthrough we're just going to look at some of the application problems. I don't want to do them all and I don't want to do, uh, typically I don't want to do all of even the ones that I do uh, complete here. I just want to give you an idea of how to do the problems and just kind of a quick review of what we covered in class. Uh, for these problems, the first thing I want to look at, I do want to look at these uh, solve equation problems. They're kind of the, the warm-ups to the application, I should say, um, as they would be fair problems that I would ask um, even on a mastery challenge. So uh, what I want to look at here is kind of how to do these problems. Uh, first thing I would see is I want to start as far away from the x squared as I can and undo that. So the minus 5, I want to add 5 to both sides, giving me 3x squared equals uh, 51. And what's that 51? Let's see here when I take 51. Uh oh, 51 divided by Three, I get 17. So I, I'm already dividing by three. So dividing by three, I get 17 there. And to take the square root of 17, there's uh, there's two options here. So so at this point, I, I kind of glossed over that. But to get rid of the x squared, I do want to take a square root. Uh, but I do kind of have two options here. I can either say it just equals the square root of 17 and leave it as that. Or we can actually tell what the square root of 17 is. Uh, about 4.12, say 4.12. Kind of the idea behind it being an application problem is that um, you're not getting a nice round answer there. You're not getting a nice even answer. Um, and then it, again, if you wish, if you want to be complete with it, you can say plus or minus 4.12. That's, uh, but that part's up to you. I don't, I don't expect the plus or minus, but it is technically the correct way to answer that. So same kind of thing on number two. I don't, I don't feel like I need to go over that as well. Um, but follow the same kind of process and you should get a, to get an answer at least. Um, for the next set of problems, it says find the perimeter of a rectangle. Uh, or sorry, it says the perimeter is 120 inches. And it gives you some measurements here. It says that this is x squared and this is 3. Uh, it says write, a uh, write an equation to represent this. Uh, I'll write the equation. I'll let you solve it. Uh, we know perimeter is all the sides added together. So in this case, I would have 3 plus x squared. There's also a 3 over here. And there's an x squared down here, which I'll need both of those. So we'll say plus 3 plus x squared. And that's going to equal my perimeter of 120. Of course, I could kind of simplify this. I can combine my 3's. That's going to give me a plus 6. And combine my x squareds also to say 2x squared. I kind of wrote that a little bit backwards, but it still works. That's probably a little easier equation to solve. So you can feel free to solve that. And that'll be your part B down here. Um, for the area, so it says this rectangle is an area of 56 square inches. Area is going to be your two measurements of a, of a rectangle multiplied together. So we're going to have 4y squared equals 56. And then your job now is to solve that equation and see what you get for y. Um, Totally, uh, totally okay to just have the positive versions instead of the plus or minus here. Technically, we don't have negative uh, side lengths on rectangles. So 
Um, if you still put, put the plus or minus, that's okay. Uh, but yeah, the positive ones are technically the more correct ones in that case. Number five, so number five says write your own example of a quadratic equation in the form x squared equals d, where d is just a number. That's all I want here is a number um, that has each of the following. I want no real solutions, which we kind of talked about that in class. Um, one real solution and two real solutions. So uh, I'm going to let you think about those. If you have questions, you can ask me in class. I don't want to give those ones away. I want to see who knows it without asking. Okay. Um, and I know that there are, there's a, at least a couple of people in class that kind of have an idea on these. But go back through the, uh, the notes from this day and see if you can figure it out for yourself. Don't, don't just run to, I don't know what to do and, and panic about it. Okay, think about it. What what makes something have no solution when I'm when I when I have an equation that says x squared equals a number? What makes something have no solution? What makes it have one solution and what makes it have two solutions? I'll give you a hint. The two solutions comes from the plus or the minus. So that's my hint there, um, and that really takes care of I would say b and c. Um, a and part A is, is kind of a trick. Uh, like I said, we talked about it in class though. So I hope that helps, gives you a quick rundown of what we did in class and uh, gives you a little bit of help finding your, uh, finding your answers to your application page. So good luck. We'll see you in class.